Deathbringer here. Subscribe so you never miss an upload. Hi, I'm Kira. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master's TA. So I'm going to be subbing in this week and I'm going to be reviewing The Good Society, a Jane Austen RPG. And I am Deathbringer. I bury NPCs under Northanger Abbey. Good Society is a tabletop RPG created by an independent publisher known as Story Brewers Roleplaying. Good Society is set in the world of the Regency period. So it's going to be inspired by some of Jane Austen's most timeless novels, from Persuasion to Pride and Prejudice. How do I kill the zombies? Not Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, just Pride and Prejudice. This game emphasizes collaborative storytelling, and it's a game where everyone gets to GM and explore a shared narrative vision. Players are encouraged to engage in a complex network of relationships, rumors, and reputation that connect a cache of characters with equally sophisticated inner lives and motives. For this review, I'm only going to be covering the physical base game, principles, and playing cards. However, for those interested, a digital version of the game and a modified LARP rule set are both available as PDFs on the publisher's website. The book is aesthetically pleasing. It's available in hardcover and it's case bound with this vibrant red and gold thread. The end pages are tea green, perfect for afternoon parties and high drama of an Austin story, and decorated with a floral pattern. The book comes with smooth, glossy, cut edge pages and a green ribbon too. The book is also fully illustrated and printed in color. The illustrations by Raven Warner are beautifully composed lined and colored, bringing the romantic world of Austin to life. This set isn't complete without the accompanying deck of desire, relationship, and connection cards. The portrait art on the cards is all the work of the illustrator Aviv Orr, who also created illustrations officially used by the Critical Role team. Here, as ever, their work is expressive and has all the personality you need to start brainstorming story ideas. How can I win Elizabeth's affections? Good Society uses social mechanics to replicate the structure of an Austin story. Games are broken into cycles of play. Each cycle involves a series of steps or stages, and they are, one, the collaboration stage, in which everybody works together and you establish some ground rules and expectations for the game. Next is the novel stage, in which players spend most of their time role-playing interactions between the characters and in-game events. The reputation stage is where everybody figures out how the previous events of the novel stage and all their role-playing impacts their characters' reputations and their stature and notoriety in society. The rumor and scandal stage is the stage in which players can seed rumors and potential sources of scandal for their fellow players. The epistolary stage, which is where players write and receive in-story letters corresponding to the events of the cycle. You're starting to see a pattern here, I'm sure. And the upkeep stage. This is where you look at the full play cycle, which is all the stages that came before this one, and decide how the inner conflicts, the core motivations of your character, have progressed, and how their connections will change and grow to reflect this cycle of events. All of these stages create ample opportunity for hidden motives, secret correspondences, and dramatic miscommunications. They're designed to drive conflict and characters together in a distinctly Austinian way. How do I eliminate Mr. Darcy? That's something that you should negotiate with your group and also maybe your game master. The game master in this game is called the facilitator. They are distinguished from other players by having more resolve tokens than other participants and by playing the NPCs. Make no mistake, however. In Good Society, the Game Master is as much a player as anyone. Likewise, players have power over the story and can exert authority over the world and other characters using their resolve tokens. Resolve tokens are a finite currency that each player receives at the start of the game. 
and can be played if you want your characters to accomplish something really unlikely or if you want to alter or aid the events of the story that are beyond your character's control. Also, if you would like to compel another player's character to change or act in some way, you can use the resolve token. If you're making another player behave in a way they hadn't planned, you give them a resolve token. So one way to earn more tokens is to perform other players' requests. You can also collect resolve tokens by playing reputation tags. The world of good society is filled with curious country people, closely acquainted small towns, and gossipy nosy neighbors. If your character's behavior can be observed, it is guaranteed to impact your reputation. That's why I never leave witnesses alive! You can act in accordance with the social expectations of 19th century society and receive positive reputation tags for good behavior, but as they say, well-behaved players seldom make history. So you can also honor your character's passions and accept negative reputation tags to tell a different kind of story. I have a reputation for causing fear and pain! You don't want that kind of reputation. If you allow these tags to accumulate, you could have consequences that could affect the rest of play. You can get rid of reputation tags by playing them in-game and allowing them to impact your major character's interaction. Anytime you play a reputation tag, you earn a resolve token. In addition to their resolve token, every player receives one monologue token. Monologue tokens are used by one player to reveal another player's intentions. When a player spends a monologue token on another player's character, the targeted character must perform an inner monologue that reveals their inner thoughts, feelings, plans, and motives. Yikes. I really like this idea. Since every character has just one token, they can't compromise every secret scheme in the game, but it has a lot of potential for drama and comedic timing. I mean, can you imagine sending this to a friend cooking up an evil plot? No one's plots are as evil as mine. It's the perfect recipe for mischief and mayhem. Yes! Where do I find out more about creating this mayhem? If you're interested in learning about the game, there are tons of downloadable resources online at Story Brew's website. Additionally, they have this whole YouTube series on how to play the game and a full-length video that I personally found super helpful because it puts all of these rules into context and you can see the players actually navigate like a cohesive story to put these rules into play. You'll find links to Good Society and Story Brewer's website at the links below and links to Dungeon Craft Facebook and Patreon, where you can get bonus content and support the channel, as well as links to Professor Dungeon Master's own game, Deathbringer. Thanks again, and may all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer a 10. If you have any sense or sensibility, you'll get my game and t-shirt at the link below, and watch these videos.